I need some help, big time. Jed Fillingham admitted he was the one driving a government truck after a night of bar hopping. Did you have something to drink? Yes, sir. I don't remember exactly how much, no, sir. While on official business at a government conference in Dallas, June 2010, receipts show Fillingham and two other Department of Veterans Affairs employees went to the bars and bought a dozen drinks. Vodka, Jaeger bombs, and beer, a witness would say some of the drinks bought for other patrons. One of those two companions was Amy Wheat, who somehow fell out of the moving truck. I looked back there, and she, was, she wasn't there. She wasn't there, and so I said, where is she? The other man in the truck called 911. We're up right now, we need big time help. Amy Wheat died from her injuries. He was the love of my life. She was my only child. Four years after losing her daughter, her mom says the pain is still fresh. And that's one of the hardest things is that I'll never hear, I love you, mama. What you doing, mom? When are we going Christmas shopping, mom? Police did arrest Fillingham that night, but didn't give him a breathalyzer until six hours after the incident. By then, they say he blew a .03. Authorities did not prosecute. Fillingham would soon admit having a previous DUI, and the feds later found he was driving that government truck without an active driver's license. A few months after Amy Wheat's death, Fillingham resigned his job at the VA office in Mississippi. But then, months later, he reappeared even while he remained under federal investigation for misusing that truck, a probe that ultimately found he drove intoxicated. In March 2011, the VA rehired him, paying him $100,000 a year. They should have fired him. No criminal punishment, no VA punishment, and, and he's making the same salary in the same position. But an I-team investigation reveals the VA quickly realized there was a problem. Memos we obtained show there was an emergency meeting three months after Fillingham was rehired. It included agency lawyers and a VA chief of staff. We tried to figure out how and why he managed to get back on the payroll. We showed that draft internal memo to Darren Selnick, a former top VA administrator who was not involved in this specific case. They knew they had a big problem because these people don't get together unless there are big problems. The memo shows the agency's human resources administrator who rehired Jed Fillingham neglected to ask key questions about his past. And it shows the former DUI wasn't disclosed to the selecting official because there was not a nexus between the offense and the job for which he was applying. And that Fillingham himself failed to answer a key question on his application, whether he'd resigned previously because of unfavorable circumstances. Part of the application that Selnick, a former hiring manager at VA, says would be very difficult to simply overlook. By VA's own standards and pride of who they hire, they should have never hired this guy back. I mean, they, they, they knew. They should have never done it. When we went to the VA's administrators here in D.C. with questions, they declined to answer, instead telling us that the process in which Jed Fillingham was rehired is deeply regrettable. Yet, four years later, he still works there. Good morning. A congressional committee has asked the agency to investigate why. To date, no reply. So far, they've received no explanation. In their statement to the I-Team, the VA says it's working hard to hold employees accountable while providing appropriate due process and enforce better standards of acceptable performance. But Annette Berry says four years later, she still wants justice for the death of her daughter. I don't think he should get off scot-free, which is what he has done. 